among many other things, Spiceworks allows us to keep track of three very important aspects of our network. Those are help desk tickets, customer support requests, assets, desktops, laptops, switches, etc. And IT services, those are service agreements. While we can very easily link a ticket to an asset or a service agreement, there is no easy out-of-the-box way of linking an asset to an IT service. But why would you like to do that in the first place? It's simple. When you have a problem, you don't want to go over all your ID services information. You want to pinpoint the data of who you should be calling and what your service includes in just one single click. Let's see how we can achieve that with Spiceworks. First, let's see how easy it is to relate a ticket to an asset or an IT service. All we have to do is scroll down to the related to box and start typing in a name of an asset in this case asset called server this is actual server on my network or service agreement in this case service agreement called web hosting Spiceworks automatically picks up the name from its database so you can click it and it will be related to the ticket So now that we saw how easy it is to directly link a ticket to an asset or an ID service, we want to be able to do the same and link together asset and IT services without relying on help desk tickets. In order to do that, we are going to install a plugin called Dynamic Troubleshooting Links from Spicebox Community. To install the plugin, use the search box at the top right corner of your screen, right next to your avatar. Type in Dynamic Links Plugin and click on the search button. Spiceworks will automatically fetch the results from the community. The result we are looking for is the first result. It is called Dynamic Troubleshooting Action Links and it's marked with an extension icon. We are going to click on that and then we are going to click on the Install button. Spiceworks will automatically install the plugin to our local Spiceworks application. But before we can configure the plugin, we first need to create an IT service and retrieve the information we need to link it up to a device. Let's do that right now. Click on the inventory button at the top menu, then click on IT services. The IT services section will appear. Now click on new IT service and choose the type that fits your needs. For the purpose of this tutorial we're going to select custom. Let's fill in the details for a new service agreement. We're going to call the, the vendor name demo vendor and the account will be demo. We don't need a website and we'll just select a contract end date. Let's choose something here and certain cost. And now we're going to click on the save button and we have created a new IT service agreement. Now here comes a very, very important part. We must click on the IT service we've just created because this will refresh the browser's URL and we will be able to retrieve the information we need from the address bar. What we see here is the URL of the service agreement and the vendor. This URL has all the information we need to link the IT services and the assets. The first number is the vendor number. We are going to use that in a custom field called IT Service Vendor ID. The second number is the agreement number, and we are going to use it in a custom field called IT Service Agreement ID. Those two fields together will help us to link the IT service to the device. Let's go ahead and create those two custom fields right now. Click on the Help Desk button and then click on Settings. Scroll your way down till you see the advanced and international options and click on that. Scroll down to the custom attribute section and click on the add button to create our first custom attribute. As a name, type in IT service vendor ID. We're going to keep the type as text because we don't want Spiceworks to add trailing or leading zeros to the ID and we don't need to change anything else. So we're going to click on the save button 
and we are going to add additional custom field this time we are going to call it IT service agreement ID and once again we're going to keep it as text and click on the save button remember Spiceworks automatically adds C underscore to custom attribute field names we'll see why this is important in a few seconds let's test the custom attributes we've just created and add values to them click on the inventory button then click on devices select a device for the purpose of this tutorial it can be any device and scroll down until you see the general information tab as you can see the two new custom fields are now available in this tab so click on the edit button and enter the values that we have retrieved from the IT service URL in the appropriate place in the IT service vendor ID type the vendor ID number and in the IT service agreement ID type in the agreement ID number click on the save button and let's move on to the last step of this tutorial configuring the dynamic troubleshooting action links plugin to do that scroll all the way up and click on the help desk button then click settings scroll down till you see the manage extension sections and click on that click on the dynamic troubleshooting action link configure button to expand its settings clear the default values and replace the link title with service provider this is the title that you'll see in Spiceworks desktop application now we need to provide Spiceworks with the IT service URL we will start by copying the base URL value from the browser address bar and paste it as the base value of the URL template Spiceworks IT service URL structure is always the same. Only the vendor and the ID agreement numbers are changing. So we will configure the plugin to use two static constant strings and two dynamically updated values based on the IT service vendor ID and the IT service agreement ID. Let's start filling in the URL. As we previously said, the base URL will always start with our server name and will be followed by a forward slash the word vendors and one more forward slash now comes the first dynamic part let's cover the rules for the dynamic parts using the IT service vendor ID custom field that we have created every dynamic part starts with the pound symbol followed by opening braces since we are addressing the database directly when we are calling to custom fields, we will add C underscore to the name of the custom field. We will also replace all white spaces with underscore and will use all non capital letters. Dynamic parts are closed with closing braces. So let's do that and continue to the second static part, the agreements part. Typing forward slash, followed by the word agreements and additional forward slash in order to complete the URL we will need to add the second dynamic part this is the IT service agreement ID part we will do it in the exact same way that we've added the first part adding a C and underscore at the beginning replacing all white spaces with underscore and using all non capital letters don't forget we need to close the dynamic part with closing braces click on the save button to save the plugin configuration and let's go to the inventory section and test the results selecting our server scroll down until you see the tools icon click on that and notice that a new link called service provider now appears let's click on that link and we are being redirected to the related IT service but how can we tell that this is the right one? First of all, know that this is the one marked with a frame. Second, check the URL at the address bar. It shows vendor2 and agreement2, just the values we've added for the server. Third, 
check the details in the timeline and information section of this IT service. Now, let's add vendor ID and agreement ID details to another device and make sure that our configuration works. To do that, I'm going to click on the web hosting IT service. I'm going to retrieve the values from the URL, they are both one. Then I'm going to go back to the inventory section and choose another device. This is completely random. I'm going to choose the next server in the list, click on the edit button and enter the values for both the IT service vendor ID and the IT service agreement ID. I'm going to save the changes and I'm going to click on the tools menu and click on the service provider link. Now as you can see the web hosting service provider is selected. It is marked with a frame. At the bottom of the page the overview and timeline are now showing the information related to the web hosting device and within the URL you can see that both the vendor and the agreement ID are one. So we have successfully connected an asset to an IT service directly, just as we planned.